Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a fun one because we are going to be ranking makeup brands at Sephora. I'm really excited to do this. I first saw this concept on Lauren May Beauty's channel. She ranked, um, I think it was like advent calendars during her month long Christmas series. And then I recently saw Angelica do it. So I wanted to do it as well. She ranked a lot of makeup brands. So this is mostly based off of her video. I can't pronounce her last name, I'm sorry. I'm a new subscriber to her, so I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. If you do know, please uh, let me know in the comments because I'm, I'm not sure. Little quick life update. It is snowing here in Canada. In my last video, I said summer is officially here. I think I filmed that on Monday? No, Tuesday. I filmed that on Tuesday and it was 30 degrees and now it's Friday and it's like one degree. Zero to one degree. I don't know how to feel. I'm not ready. We had the air conditioning on and now we have the heat on. It's, it's crazy. So if you can hear the heat, sorry about that. Also, if you can hear my roommate, he's working from home today. Sorry about that too because like he is loud. Love him so much, but like he's a lot. Anyway, uh, I don't think I really have any other updates. Let me think. Nothing's happened. I did some online shopping. I shopped for clothes and uh, I got it in the mail and they were all way too big. This is why I don't shop for clothes because makeup is one size besides foundations, but like, you know what I mean? Makeup's always gonna fit. I just, yeah, I'm so frustrated because I'm so excited to buy new summer staples for my wardrobe and none of it fits. The clothes are like insanely big. I just, I wouldn't even know what size to go from here. So I'm just gonna return it all. Like I even went so far as to like measure myself with a measuring tape so I could have my correct dimensions and that way I could order the correct size online. But yeah, didn't work out. That's why I love makeup. Anyway, I'm gonna scooch over and we can start getting into the brands. Okay, so let's get the categories on the board here. <laughs> bored as if it's like a game show. Let's get them on the screen here. I know editing Kelsey is gonna have a grand old time trying to figure out how to put those categories on the screen. So I've made five categories. Other people that I've seen that have done this video have six, but I just feel like I'd get overwhelmed with six. I'm just gonna do five. So the best category at the top is actually great. These are the brands that I really love. The brands that I really look forward to their launches. Pretty much like can do no wrong, I'm obsessed kind of brands. Next up underneath it, we have the some hits, some misses brand. So this is brands that I really look forward to what they launch, but not everything is something that I'm obsessed with. Next up we have the category meh, which is just like I'm neutral to it. I don't love it, but I also don't dislike it. The next one is thanks but no thanks. So brands that I think miss the mark more often than not. And then the last category is I'd rather burn my money. I don't think there are going to be any brands in that I'd rather burn my money category today because I'm talking about brands at Sephora. So I don't really have like a strong hatred towards any of these brands. But if we're talking about like influencer brands, online brands, I can do a separate video for that. There would probably be more in that category. Like I don't think there's any brands I'm gonna talk about today where I'd rather burn my money than support them. But there are a few that aren't at Sephora that do fall under this category for sure. So let me know if you wanna see a second part and I can totally do that. So I wanted to put this first brand at the beginning of the video because I just wanted to talk briefly about it. It's Marc Jacobs beauty the video that i actually had planned to film today is like mark jacobs beauty going out of business closing up their beauty brand and why i think that's happened and other brands that i think we might see that from in the future but then i checked my instagram and it turns out they're just i think rebranding or pulling out of sephora i've seen both theories but i'm pretty sure mark jacobs beauty has confirmed that they're actually not closing down so that kind of shot my idea in the foot but yeah so the first brand mark jacobs i wanted to talk about because i'm not sure what's really going on with them honestly I'm more aligned with the theory that they're pulling out of Sephora, but that kind of confuses me because most of the Kendo brands, which is like Ula Henriksen, KVD, what are the other Kendo brands? Marc Jacobs, I think Fenty is also a Kendo brand, and Bite Beauty as well. I don't know if they're all Sephora exclusives, but there's definitely a good amount of them that are Sephora exclusives. So to hear Marc Jacobs potentially pulling out of Sephora, I don't know. I don't think that's likely. I'm more leaning towards the rebrand theory if they're not closing down, because honestly, I wasn't surprised to hear that they were like closing up shop. They just haven't had a good solid release in a long time. The only standout product I really think of when I think of Marc Jacobs Beauty is their highliners. Other than that, they haven't had a really solid release in quite some time. And for that reason, I'm gonna put them in the thanks but no thanks category just because I feel like they miss the mark more often than they get a product right. I'm not really interested in any of their launches. I wouldn't really purchase it, but I don't think it's bad enough for them to go into the I'd rather burn my money category. And I'm definitely not 
not neutral to the brand. I mean, I guess I am kind of neutral because if they did launch a really good product, I wouldn't hesitate in buying it, but I just feel like they don't release great products very often. So yeah, I think I'm gonna put them in the thanks but no thanks category. Next up we have Fenty. And I think Fenty is actually gonna go into the actually great category. I feel like they are so on trend. They are the IP brand. For me personally, I'm always interested in what they're gonna launch. Very rarely do their launches miss the mark in the sense that I'm not interested in them. I don't think I've ever tried a Fenty product that I didn't think was good. Mm, that's not true. Their bronzer isn't my favorite. Mm. Mm, because of that. No, I still think they're great because so many people love their bronzer. So I think it's just more of a personal thing. Like personally, I like a bronzer to be a little more creamy in formula, but that doesn't make it a bad product. Like it's not a bad launch. And the undertones of that bronzer are so amazing, chef's kiss. So yeah, just because it's not my personal cup of tea doesn't make it a bad launch. And I don't think they've launched anything that I haven't been interested in. There are some Fenty launches where I wouldn't go out and pay for the product, but very rarely is there a launch where I wouldn't be excited to receive it. It's just kind of what I use to gauge if I'm truly excited about a launch because I do try to look at launches as what they are, launches. I try not to associate it with the brand because oftentimes I'm like, oh, I know I love Fenty. I'm trying to not blindly purchase something from a brand just because it's from the brand. I talked about this concept in my Anastasia Beverly Hills video. I will link it in the cards up above. But when it came to Anastasia Beverly Hills, they're also on this list by the way. But when it came to them, I just blindly purchased just because because it was Anastasia Beverly Hills. And I feel like that's quite a significant waste of money. So I try to look at launches as like just a launch and not kind of associate it with the brand. And that's why I kind of do the PR thing. So it kind of helps me distinguish if I actually like the thing that's being launched or if it's just, I really like the brand and that's kind of swaying my opinion. I hope that makes sense because I'm certainly always grateful for PR, but I'm not always excited about the product that I receive, if that makes sense. I hope it does. Anyway, moving on, the next brand is Anastasia Beverly Hills. Oh gosh. Hmm. If you asked me like three years ago, they would go in the actually great category, but now I only use their brow products. So I don't think I would put them in the thanks but no thanks category, even though their recent launches have really felt like they belong in that category. And I'm also not going to put them in the meh category because I'm not really neutral because I do still kind of hope for the brand. I am really rooting for them to make a comeback, so I'm not gonna put them in the neutral category. I think I'll put them in some hits, but some misses. I guess that's the only one that's really uh, applicable because they're definitely not in the actually great category, at least not anymore. If you had asked me a few years ago, that's where they would go for sure. I do think they have fantastic brow products and that's really all I use for my brows. And the reason I don't use other brow products is just because I find the undertones aren't as good as what Anastasia launches. Their undertones are just so good and so natural and match almost any hair color. So their undertones are unmatched for me personally. Everything else pulls super warm on me and my hair is pretty cool toned. So anyway, that's besides the point. I think I would put them in the some hits, but some misses because I'm definitely not neutral. If they weren't my favorite brand previously, I think they would go in the meh category just because I'm like, mm, I don't really care for their recent launches, but I don't hate them. So I don't know. Okay, next up we have Milk Makeup. I think this is gonna have to go in the some hits and some misses category as well. I don't think that every launch is a hit. For example, those recent eye chalks. Is that what they were? I don't know. There was some sort of like makeup chalk. I just feel like that was just a weird concept because we often use the word chalky to describe makeup in a negative context. So I feel like that was just kind of a weird launch. I didn't really enjoy that one. So they definitely don't go in the actually great category because they do have some questionable launches in my opinion. I'm going to also put them in the some hits, some misses category because I do really like the bronzer. Where is it? I used it today. Here it is, the little milk makeup bronzer, but I didn't like their Hydro Grip Primer. So there's just kind of like a mishmash of products that I enjoy. Also, as I've been testing this more, I feel like it's a little bit orange. I don't know, just kind of wanted to give you a quick note about this product because I did rave about it for a long time and I still do really like it. I feel like it looks good on my skin. It's just, it's a tad orange. I wish they would come up with more shades. But yeah, since there is like a significant mishmash of products that I like and ones that I don't like from the brand, I'm gonna put them in the some hits, some misses. Ooh, this one's interesting. Bare Minerals. I'm trying to think. It's definitely not in the meh category because I don't really like the brand. I said there wasn't, I'd rather, burn my money brands in here, but like I'm kind of on the fence of putting them in that category. It's not that I like hate the brand. I just have no desire to have any of their products in my collection. I do have that one Bare Minerals blush though. 
do like it. Okay, yeah. I don't think I'd rather burn my money, but I'm gonna go with thanks, but no thanks. I have no desire to wear mineral makeup. I get that there is a certain demographic that would be interested in that, but that's just not me. And their launches are really boring to me. Everything they come out with is just super neutral, super natural, which is, again, a certain demographic. It's just not my demographic. So they're gonna go in the thanks, but no thanks category. I just think that they lack a lot of interesting products. But that being said, just because they're not interesting doesn't mean they're not good. Like the blush that I do have from them, I did receive that for free somehow. I don't remember. I definitely didn't pay for it though. And I do think that it's a high quality blush. It survived my cheek product declutter. If you're interested in watching that, I will link it up above. So yeah, definitely not. I'd rather burn my money. I'm going to put them in thanks, but no thanks, because I don't think I would purchase from them unless they came out with something super duper cool. But I can't see that happening, honestly. Next up, we have Too Faced. Ooh, Too Faced. If you had asked me in 2015, 2016, they could do no wrong in my eyes. So I'd put them in the actually great category. Now they're going to go in the thanks, but no thanks category just because they don't launch anything exciting. I can't remember the last time I purchased a Too Faced product. I, I really can't remember. I did work with them at one point in 2016. I did um, some photos for their, is a honey palette. What was that called? Peanut butter and honey. Instead of the peanut butter and jelly palette, they had the peanut butter and honey palette. And uh, I did some images for them for that. And that was fun. It was a nice payday. They paid well. I'm probably not supposed to say that, but it's not a negative thing. And my contract probably is expired by now. So whatever. But yeah, I used to love them and I kept giving them chance after chance, but they kept having like scandal after scandal. And I just think that their demographic is very skewed. It's hard to know who they're actually targeting because all of their products either go super sexually explicit, like their pat the highlighter. I can't remember what else, but there were some very sexually explicit products in that collection. It was a collab with one of the Real Housewives, I think. I don't really remember. Honestly, I didn't really pay much attention to it, but it's either that or very cutesy, very teenager. And it's just like, pick one. You know what I mean? Like, are you going to be cutesy or are you going to be more X-rated? So not only that, but I should do a whole video on Too Faced and why I don't buy from them because it's a lot, honestly. There's like a lot of reasons, but on top of that, their quality has gone to so yeah, uh, they're definitely in the thanks but no thanks category, but I don't think I'd rather burn my money because they do have a couple of decent products. I wouldn't say they're good by any means, especially not by today's standards. So yeah, definitely in the thanks but no thanks category. The quality of their products isn't good enough to justify their problematic behavior. I hope that makes sense. So yeah, thanks but no thanks for Too Faced. Bite Beauty. I think this is an interesting one. I recently created my own lipstick with the Bite Beauty Lip Lab and by recently it was like almost six months ago. That was really fun. And I use this lipstick so often. Oh my gosh, I just love it. I can actually post the color formula or like concoction that they created for me. So you can actually recreate this exact lipstick in the Bite Beauty Lab. I'm pretty sure they're doing like online lipstick making. They were anyway, back when I made this in December, November, something like that. I'm not sure about the lip labs in the US because everything is pretty open in the US. So you could probably even make this in person. Anyways, my whole point is I will post it so that if you are interested, you can make your own. And the point of that was I did work with them about six months ago and I really enjoyed my experience. That being said, I just think that they've been doing too many rebrands. They had such a good solid lipstick formula and they discontinued it and then they reformulated it to be vegan and then they discontinued it again. So I feel like I keep falling in love with their lip products and then I can't even get them anymore. They just keep breaking my heart. I really liked their lip pencils as well and they don't make those anymore. Their French press glosses really enjoyed those I think I got rid of mine because it kind of went bad and I couldn't repurchase it I was sad so bite beauty keeps breaking my heart so for that I am a little bit hesitant to purchase from them so I think I'm gonna put them in the meh category I just really like them I do but too many rebrands too many reformulations that I'm just scared to get hurt again so I just refrain from purchasing from them but I do think that their launches look fun I just wish that they would come back out with OG lip products because that's what they started with and if they launched their OG lip products again and were like, we're not discontinuing this time, I would certainly purchase. Like, absolutely, no questions asked. But only if they promised, because I don't want to get hurt. Anyway, moving on. The next one is Rare Beauty. Okay, uh, I'm trying to think. I do have that one Rare Beauty liquid blush and I very much enjoy that. That being said, they haven't really launched anything that I really want. 
Oh yeah, there's those liquid lip balms. I'm gonna put them in the some hits, some misses category because there are some products like that eyeshadow palette they launched with the big glitter in the center. I hated that so much. Like with my whole soul, I don't know why, but I just really didn't like that product. Just the look of it, I never tried it. I'm sure the quality is fine, but yeah. And then you have some launches like the liquid blushes, but I also wanna try the cream blushes. And those uh, liquid eyeshadows look nice, as well as those liquid lip balms. That's what I really wanna try. So yeah, they do have some hits for sure, but there also are a few products that miss the mark for me. Personally, they're eyeshadows. Those are like the products where I'm like, no thanks. Okay, next up, Hourglass. Ooh, this is a hard one. Actually, no, it's not. They're going in the thanks, but no thanks. I don't recall one Hourglass product that I genuinely love, and it is so expensive, number one. Number two, they don't consider people of color in their launches. Everything is very uh, meant for fair people. I don't like that either. But even before that became an issue with Hourglass, I just, I hadn't tried their, those powders, their powder products, like the highlighters, the ambient light. I don't know what they are, but I really wanted to try their bronzers, their highlighters, but they were just too expensive for me. But what I have tried is their mineral primer. Don't like that. It leaves a white cast on my face. The Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation. Tried that, hated it. Pretty much the only thing that they have going for them right now is they have really pretty packaging and their formulations are all vegan. So it's like a luxury product, but also vegan. That being said, I'm not vegan. So uh, I don't feel limited to this brand in particular. If I'm gonna go for luxury and cruelty -free, Free, I'll just honestly go for Samantha Ravindal's brand as of lately. So I just don't think that they're really providing anything and they're too problematic again to justify the products that I have purchased. I've also tried their mascara. What's it called? Caution. There we go. There it is. Tried the Caution mascara. Really didn't like it for me personally. So yeah, that is definitely going in the thanks but no thanks category. Maybe if I tried more from them in the past, I would have a different opinion, but they're just, again, the products I've tried are not good enough to justify their problematic behavior. So thanks, but no thanks. Ooh, next up, Danessa Myricks. I had her brand in a brands I want to try in 2021 video that I posted early this year. I can link that in the cards too. I'm just link and everything. But honestly, I've seen Lauren May Beauty review a couple of her products and she didn't like them that much. So I'm kind of like, Mm, like she tried the twin flames I'm pretty sure and I really wanted to try those in particular But she said that she didn't enjoy them the way she thought she would and then I was kind of like Oh, what if I don't enjoy them the way I think I will so she was definitely in the some hits some misses category Before but now after watching some reviews of her products I'm not sure if they're for me So I'm gonna put her in the meh category just because I haven't really tried anything from her brand So I am a little bit indifferent and I'm just kind of unsure. It's not even like an I'm neutral It's just I'm I'm not sure. So I'm gonna put her in the meh category. That being said, a lot of her products do have fantastic pro artist features. She has a lot of things that you can like scoop out and use on clients and stuff like that and remain sanitary, so that's important. So I would definitely look into her products for my kit, but for personal use, I'm just kind of like, Meh. So that's the category she's going in. Ooh, next one, Kaja. I've only really, really tried one product from Kaja and they don't really entice me that much. So I'm gonna put them in the meh category, actually. I was gonna put them in the some hits, some misses, but I don't think they deserve it, honestly. I just feel like I'm not really into the gimmicky products. So, you know, the roll-on highlighter, wasn't really into it. The bento boxes I did try and again, kind of like meh, not the most amazing quality, but it's not a bad product by any means. So I do kind of like those. I'm trying to think of other things, just like the cutesy little stamps, like the stamp on blush and the cutesy heart lipstick. I'm just kind of over it, honestly. So I'm gonna put them in the meh category. I don't hate their launches, but I don't love them and I'm not looking out for them. So yeah, that's kind of where I stand with Kaja at this point. Okay, so next on the list we have Tower 28. This is kind of hard because I've only tried two products from them, but I really loved both of the things I've tried. I've tried their cream blush and their jelly glosses, and they were both great. So I'm gonna put them in actually great because I do really look forward to anything that they launch. Next on the list, I really wanna try their cream bronzer. It's like a glowy kind of shimmery bronzer, and that's not really something that I'm used to, but with the cream blush formula, I'm 
definitely open to trying it. That cream blush is just like my favorite thing ever. I just, I love it so much. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna put them in the actually great category for now, just because I really love their products. Okay, next up is KVD. If you had asked me six months ago, I would definitely put them in the meh category, just because I know that I liked their products. That being said, I know a lot of other people didn't like supporting the brand until their Apple Bomb foundation thing. Now, I would say they have some hits, some misses. Not everything hits the mark for me. Personally, I don't think I would like the Apple Bomb foundation just because I do have more oily skin. So I feel like that would just slide around on me. It is marketed as being super hydrating though. So that's just a personal thing. But I definitely think that they're a brand to watch out for. I do think that now that they've had such a successful launch with that foundation, I feel like a lot of their launches are gonna be very well received. I know they recently launched those liquid blushes and those went over pretty well. So definitely some hits, but some misses. I don't love all their products. For example, their concealer is just not my favorite, but their tattoo liner, so very good. Love it. What else do I love? Their contour powders from the Shade and Light palette. You can get them individually. Love those so much. So definitely they're in the some hits and some misses category. And I'd really like to see them improve. Honestly, I would love to see them go up to the actually great category, but I think they still have some work to do to get there. Next up, Natasha Denona. I actually haven't tried anything except for her eyeshadows, but those are really good. I haven't tried one that I don't like yet. I'm gonna put her in the actually great category because I'm very interested to try more of her brand. And I'm very interested in almost anything she launches. Like if you take the name away, like Natasha Denona, you take that off of their products, I would still be very interested. I really like her face palettes. Those look beautiful. Not necessarily something I need, like they often run too dark for me personally, but I love almost all of her eyeshadow color stories. Her highlighters look just beautiful. I wanna try her I Need a Nude lip liner lipstick kind of range. I wanna try those. So yeah, as of now, I'm gonna put them in the actually great category. Again, I haven't tried a ton, but until I try something that I don't like, I feel like that's where they belong. And lastly, we have Tarte. Ooh, this is an interesting one too. I'm not really sure where to put them. Again, it's another brand that if you had asked me five years ago, they would definitely go in the actually great category. But for example, I feel like their clay formulas are a little bit dry in comparison to eyeshadows of today. They just don't perform well in comparison to other formulas. Same with their Amazonian clay blushes. Those are super hyped, but I just didn't find that they did much for me. I don't remember the last time I've purchased a Tarte product, honestly. I'm debating between meh and thanks, but no thanks. Yeah, I'm kind of impartial. I don't think they have bad quality, so I'm not gonna put them in thanks, but no thanks, but they definitely don't pique my interest anymore. So I'm gonna put them in the meh category. I just don't really find any of their launches interesting. They do have cute packaging, but that's about it. And I do really like their shape tape still. Everyone says that it's like not that great of a concealer. I still really like it, but I'm definitely open to trying more concealers because I will admit that it does get a little bit dry feeling on the skin. So if you have any good concealer recommendations, leave them in the comments down below. I really like the Catrice Camo one as well. I think I like that one almost as much, if not a bit more than Shape Tape which is crazy. But yeah, Tarte's gonna go in the meh category because I do really like their shape tape still. I'm trying to think if there's any products that I still really like. I like their chrome paints. Maybe I'll put them in some hits, some, mm, no, no. I don't think they deserve to be in some hits, some misses, honestly, because shape tape and chrome paints are older products in their line. And launch wise, they haven't launched anything interesting in a really, really long time. Yeah, I'm gonna put them in the meh category just because I'm kind of impartial. I don't really look forward to their launch announcements. I find a lot of their stuff very boring a lot of their stuff not great quality but there's two products out of their range that I do enjoy so yeah that kind of saves them from the thanks but no thanks category so they're gonna go right in the middle at meh and that is everything for this video I really hope you guys enjoyed I had a lot of fun filming this I really enjoyed sharing my thoughts on different brands with you guys I would be really interested to know how you guys would rank these brands because obviously we all have different opinions brands that I'm not super into you might be super into and I would love to hear your reasons why so yeah I think that is it for me today thank you so much for tuning in and thank you so much for watching if you've made it this far. Please don't forget to subscribe if you want to. If you don't, that's okay. I just really appreciate you being here. It helps out my channel so very much by you watching, so thank you. Please leave any video requests you may have in the comments down below, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.